Welcome back to this uh, further exploration of displacements and things like that in Random and for Maya. So we're going to start again with a blank blank scene and I'm going to make a plane. Okay. Now onto this plane I'm going to drop um, a model which I made again at the National Gallery of Victoria. Thank you very much people for putting up with me wandering around with my tablets sketching and sculpting. Um, so I'm going to import file and import. And I'm going to look at my ZBrush directory. So right my exercises, ZBrush directory. And this is my blood on lion. Again, another, oh, let me try it again. That was an MTL I tried to open. <laughs> import the Rodan Lion. Um, I think it's this one. That should be it, yes. Actually trying to import a um, ZBrush project there. Okay, let me just scale this up. Scale it up and move it up. So it's not quite intersecting with the plane. And let's rotate it around a little bit. Okay, uh, let's see where we stand here. Okay, not too bad. Um, first thing I want to do with this, general matter of principle, I like to smooth the UVs, smooth the normals, I should say. Uh, so I'll soften the normals here. So we're getting this kind of blobby look to it. Um, I'm going to drop on a material to it. So in Renderman, I'm going to go and drop a map material using map materials um, because it's less distracting, fewer things, fewer things to set in actual fact. Okay, so we have a map material both on the plane and on the lion. Okay, um, do a quick render of this. Let's just bring our image tool over here and render it. And yes, we can see what's going on there. Cool. Um, I'll drop an environment sphere in and I'll put a material on that. I'll be using material which I use all the time. I do have some more somewhere, believe me. Um, so that will be in my source images. Come on. And it should be fin for the XR. Let's just have a quick look and see what this renders like now. Okay, a bit noisy. Change my samples here to 128. That would be probably quite nice. Not bad. And in my random man settings over here, random man settings, just so you can see them, I want to turn on ray tracing. Pull my image tool over here. So under quality, features, turn on ray tracing, and we'll get some of the ambient occlusion kind of looks that we want and shadowing. Okay, so looking much nicer as it stands. Nice, but sort of blobby. Let me set up a, a view here where I can actually see what's going on behind. I don't need this over here now. So, okay, re-render. Okay, the model's there, but it's not looking very detailed. What I want to do now is I'm going to go into ZBrush, which I've got down here. Here's ZBrush. And I'm going to export a displacement map from this displacing to this is the low low level mesh which we have here. This is the high level mesh which we have here. So it will get us this sort of detail in this scene here. So with our base mesh set to one subdiv, okay, I'm going to again use my plugin for multi-map exporter. And my settings, which I have here, I'm going to be working with a 32-bit displacement. 32-bit uh, displacement is definitely favorite. Uh, there's no reason not to use a 32-bit displacement these days. You can use 16-bit, but it comes with its own issues. So with a 32-bit displacement, adaptive, smooth the UVs, three channels, the sub, um, oops, Subpixel accuracy, higher values get um, better quality, so I'll just shift this up to three. It's reasonably high as it is, certainly fine for the um, for the purposes of demonstration. Okay, and 
three identical channels. Okay, all going to be good. And I'm going to create the map. Okay, so very little setup here. Adaptive is a good setting. Smooth UVs, good. Three channels, 32 bits. Okay, we don't need to worry about scale. So we're going to create all maps. I'm going to call this Lion. And it will be exported as TIFF. It will be a um, floating point TIFF. Or will we use something else? Actually, we have TIFF as it's preferred. It prefers. Okay. It's creating the actual map now. So no get no great mysteries with that. Let's go back into Maya. Here's our Maya scene again. Okay, so we have a material on this. The material is. RS mesh, RMS mesh. Let's not worry about our colors up here. Let's worry about our displacement, this section we've been working on recently. Okay, currently this displacement is disabled. So I want to set it to displace. The displacement mode, I want to set to float because this is a full floating 32-bit uh, per channel image. Okay. Um, displacement encoding, I want to be signed, basically means it's going to be with this shader. And the actual displacement goes into this slot here. So input for scalar input for displacing the surface along the normal. So remember, displacements only displace along the normal. This is float displacements. We will have a look at vector displacements in the next tutorial, I promise you. Um, so here we go. We're going to plug in a file. And the file which we're going to plug in, hopefully, should be the lion. There we go, all lion skin. That's the one we just created a second ago. Okay. Now we don't need to pre filter it of any sort. And we don't need it to be um, gamma corrected. Okay, so that's in there now. If I go back to re render, and let's just bring it back into our scene. Let's put it always on top. Much prefer to have it always on top. And I re render. Take the second. Sometimes it doesn't always re render from that window. Yes, it is re rendering. We're not seeing any major change. Why is this? Well, I did have it set to always on top. Always on top. Yep, okay. Let's pull it over here. Um, the reason why we're not seeing any change in it yet is because in our displacement, the displacement scale here is set to zero. If that's set to zero, no matter what we plug in, it's being multiplied or divided, whatever, it's basically scaling everything down, so it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. Let's set this to 1, which is the correct scale for this. And now let's have a look what happens. Re-render. Now we're getting all of that extra detail. Let's just go in here. Re-render it. So this is not just bump or displacement. It is, oh, sorry, this is not just bump or normal maps. It is actually displacement. Now you'll see we're getting some tearing here. This is because we don't actually have um, the settings for displacement entirely correctly done within RenderMan. We should, in actual fact, add a RenderMan displacement attribute. Okay, so I get this down here. Displacement bound, and I'm going to try setting this bound by a process of elimination because I haven't actually set this up for this before. I'm going to set it to five and re-render. This is basically a boundary around which um, Renderman will base its displacement. So I'm getting rid of that tearing by resetting this displacement boundary. So having that attribute there to work with is really, really useful for you. Otherwise, you will get tearing where RenderMan is trying to actually displace along normals. So things to remember, we need to have a 32-bit displacement. It's much preferred. Um, plug it in to your float displacement here. Turn off your filtering. Don't need it. Um, make sure your input is linear sRGB. 
We don't need to uh, fiddle with the gain. That is important if you have a 16-bit displacement, but this is a 32-bit displacement, so not to worry about that. One other thing to remember from ZBrush. In ZBrush, under the plugin here, let me just show you, um, the preferred method of exporting 32-bit is setting your midpoint to zero. So with all of that in mind, you can see we get good results very, very quickly with Renderman for my um, displacement mapping. The difference between this and our previous result, which would have looked like, whoops, let me just go back to my material here and I'll turn it off. And let's turn this down to zero. Okay, so this is without. So again, using image tool here without displacement and with displacement. So this is only along the normal. We'll have a look in our next tutorial, vector displacement, which can actually produce concavities and all kinds of interesting stuff that would have been impossible previously. So thank you very much for your time, and I'll come back to you shortly with vector displacement.